I have been every voice. You are the chosen one! Anakin! Anakin! This is where the fun begins. Inside your head. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's instalment we're going to be talking about Pedro Pascal and the Mandalorian, we're also going to be speaking about Andor and more. So as always before I dive into it please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so already and also be sure to give that notification bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post new videos. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber let's dive straight into it. We begin today by speaking about Pedro Pascal who has reportedly signed a new deal for multiple Mandalorian projects. This is both really exciting but also expected. When Lucasfilm announced the myriad of projects that would serve as the future of the Star Wars franchise, three new shows would be spin-offs of The Mandalorian. I'm of course talking about Ahsoka, Rangers of the New Republic and The Book of Boba Fett. After a couple of months of uncertainty with Lucasfilm, it seems as though Pedro Pascal is not only staying on as Din Djarin in Mando but will also feature in some of the spin-offs. To this end I can definitely see him in Ahsoka or Rangers but maybe not so much in the Book of Boba unless of course it's a brief cameo. Now a lot of Star Wars fans say that it doesn't even matter if Pedro stays or leaves since he isn't even in the suit 80% of the time but I would make the argument that it does matter now. After season 2 it looks like Mando is more comfortable taking his helmet off in front of others. Granted it was to save Grogu but I believe that now his helmet is off it might stay that way or at least he'll take it off more frequently. This means having Pedro Pascal as the face of Mando whether it be in the main show or its spin-offs is more important than ever. But what do you guys think? Are you excited to see more of Pedro Pascal as Mando or not? Now I will say even though it's only been four months since The Mandalorian season 2 ended it feels like an eternity since we got our last dose of Mando action. Like many of you amazing folks I adore the show and can't get enough of it. The Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian season 3 can't come soon enough. In Favreau and Filoni we trust. So now guys, it's time to talk about Andor, how the show can explore the darker side of the rebellion. Ever since it was first announced, a big question people have had is how is it going to differentiate itself from Rogue One? Now from what I've gathered when we've had conversations on my channel about this, a lot of you don't seem very excited about the Andor series. But I think Lucasfilm know that they have to do something very differently to Rogue One and even though it was a very successful film, this series needs to stand alone as its own thing. So let's take a look at this article. Everyone knows the Rebellion as plucky heroes fighting evil, but the Andor series can flip the script and weave darker elements into the famous Alliance. Since Cassian Andor serves as a Rebel Alliance intelligence officer, the guerrilla organization are clearly going to play a big part in the upcoming series. And with Mon Mothma back to dish out orders and remind everyone roughly how many Bothans died in each mission, the series will chronicle Cassian Andor's career sourcing secrets and infiltrating enemy strongholds in the name of the Rebel Alliance. Out of all of the upcoming Star Wars series, this is the only one that could take a different approach when talking about the rebellion. In their big screen escapades, the audience only witnessed the outward face of the rebels, the hopeful beacon in a dark galaxy. These are the missions that make the headlines and later become legendary tales told everywhere from Tatooine to Trask. But it stands to reason that behind the joyous celebrations and self-righteousness lies a web of deception, espionage, violence and all of the things that are hidden from citizens of the Star Wars universe. As an officer, Cassian Andor can be the fulcrum in exposing the Rebel Alliance's murky secrets. As we all know in recent years, Star Wars has been very divisive, but out of all of the Disney era, Rogue One had one of the best cinematic receptions. Intriguingly, Rogue One's enthusiastic response can be partly attributed to a far darker tone than fans were used to. The troubled Gareth Edwards effort struck closer to a classic war tale than a sci-fi adventure, and the ruthless Everybody Dies ending underlines that difference. But the interesting thing is, Rogue One doesn't just hammer home the consequences of what happens when underdog rebels go up against Vader and the Empire, the film also unveils the ethical compromises required to win such a desperate battle. When Rogue One begins, Cassian Andor is a loyal to a fault soldier of the Rebel Alliance. But through meeting Jin Erso, he begins to think for himself, more like a traditional protagonist. But with the Andor series taking place a whole five years prior, Diego Luna's character should be a harder, grizzled anti-hero in his own series. The Mandalorian's Din Djarin emphatically proves that anti-hero leads can thrive within the Star Wars format and since Cassian Andor can't overtake his Rogue One character development, he should instead opt for the same ethos of questionable means and noble ends. Cassian's arc in the upcoming series could be a test of how far he'll go for the rebel cause. As you guys know, while I am looking forward to Andor, it's not the show I'm most looking forward to. I'm far more enthused by Kenobi, The Mandalorian Season 3, Ahsoka, Rangers, The Book of Boba and The Bad Batch. But I have pledged to give every single show a chance and I hope you guys can do the same. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to the Andor series? Let me know in the comments down below. 
So finally guys, we're going to be talking about the sequels. I know, I know, it's not my favourite topic, it's not your favourite topic, but this is a very good suggestion from Game Rant. Could the sequels be redeemed by a show like The Clone Wars, essentially an animated series for the sequel trilogy and beyond? The sequels, in and of themselves, didn't have anywhere near the same amount of forward planning as the Clone Wars and the prequels. The movies themselves weren't even planned ahead of time, let alone any potential animated spin-off. If J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson had gotten together and worked out a vague roadmap for the trilogy, it might have been a little bit more coherent. But since they told the story of a trilogy almost entirely independently of each other, the sequel trilogy is unfortunately riddled with inconsistencies and contradictions. Another problem is that the sequel era's timeline is a complete mess, whereas the prequel era is consistent with the original trilogy and has a clear arc from point A to point B. So could the sequel era do with a Clone Wars style animated series that could fill in the blanks? It's entirely possible that there's a visionary in the mould of Filoni with a great idea for a sequel era animated show that would unify the newest trilogy with a more cohesive narrative arc that stays true to Star Wars. Such a show could also do justice to the character of Finn, but said visionary would have to go through a lot of mental gymnastics to explain plot points like Luke's self-exile and the creation of Supreme Leader Snoke. The sequel's attempts to make up for their own narrative missteps just make things a bit worse. Maybe a TV showrunner could just make a series out of the elements of the sequels with a glimmer of hope. Well-written backstories to Snoke, Captain Phasma and Rose Tico would be very welcome, and it should leave out the somehow Palpatine returned type style. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. I personally wouldn't mind a sequel style animated show if it did make sense and gave justice to some of the very big inconsistencies that we got in the final three films. You know, often when I do these kind of videos, I'm often labelled a sequels hater, but if you've been around on my channel for long enough, you know that that's not the case. As Star Wars diehards, we do have the right to criticise films, whether we love them or hate them, and I even criticise the films I love, including The Empire Strikes Back, Revenge of the Sith, The Phantom Menace, which are some of my favourite Star Wars films. And as fans, we do deserve great content, so there's no shame in talking about this kind of thing. But, my dear friends, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, do all that good stuff down below. I'm Star Wars Meg, wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.